What's up, players? Welcome to Sims Tennis. We've got another racket review for you. Super excited about this one as I've used the V-Core 95 in the past, so this could be a potential switch for me. Before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future reviews. Okay, so as we get this thing unboxed here, let's talk about the changes that Yonex have made to the racket. They've redesigned the throat of the racket. They've added back a half millimeter of beam thickness at the 12 o'clock position. And they have also widened the hitting area up there, which really accentuates the isometric head shape. I wanna show you guys a picture I took as I think this really helps to demonstrate exactly how pronounced this change is. Here I have the V-Core 95 on top of my Extreme Tour, which is a 98. And you can see that there is a significantly larger hitting area at the top of the racket on the V-Core. This is very unique and is something that should open up the spin window and add some stability as well as forgiveness at the top of the hoop. We'll get back into how that felt on court later, but let's go ahead and check the specs first. Besides the changes we just mentioned, most of the specs remain unchanged. It still has that 16 by 20 string pattern and you can see the weight, balance, and swing weight it should have written in red here. So starting with weight, we should have an unstrung weight of 310 grams, and we end up with an unstrung weight of 310.1 grams. So we're right on spec there. As we move on to get the balance, we should have an unstrung balance of 310 millimeters. And for this frame, we end up with an unstrung balance of 307 millimeters. So it's just a little bit more head light than what we would expect. As we move on to get the swing weight, if we take into consideration the fact that the balance is a little bit more head light than what we would expect, the swing weight's probably gonna be a little under that 290 number. And we do in fact end up with a swing weight of 281. Okay, so let's quickly check the strung specs and compare to what Tennis Warehouse has listed on their website. For the strung weight, they have a strung weight listed of 326 grams, and we end up with a strung weight of 327.7 grams. They have a listed balance point of 320 millimeters, and we can assume that ours is going to be a little bit more head light than that. And we do end up with a balance point of 318 millimeters. Moving on to get the swing weight, again, we're probably gonna be under what Tennis Warehouse has listed for theirs. And we end up with a swing weight of 311 compared to their 321. As we get into the play test here, I'll start with ground strokes. Ground strokes with the V-Core 95 were a really unique experience. I think that the larger hitting area at the top of the racket was a big contributor to many of the racket's characteristics. The racket was super stable and forgiving for a 95. It also provided ample power, and what surprised me the most was the spin. The spin window is large, and the string spacing is pretty open, and this certainly showed on court. The overall feel of the racket is nice, but it still feels pretty muted, similar to the last version. I think that it may be a little bit less muted, but it's more flexible, and it also pockets the ball in a unique way due to the longer cross strings in the upper hoop. So overall, I felt a similar connection to the ball as what I felt with the last V-Core 95. When I wasn't rushed and had time to set up for ground strokes, the V-Core 95 produced a really nice ball for me, and I played some great points with it. It also held up well against flat pace, but when I got in trouble was when I had to deal with heavy balls that also had pace, and that's when it became unforgiving and apparent that I had a 95 in my hand. While I don't have any footage of me hitting returns with this racket, the racket was good on returns especially for a 95. It was maneuverable, which allowed me to get it into place quickly, and it was stable as well. It had enough pop to put the opponent on defense, but not so much that I had fear of swinging out. Moving on to volleys, volleys were the low point of this review. The racket was maneuverable, which was good, but outside of that, it was tough for me to hit a good volley. This was the one spot of the review where I would have liked some more mass, or even just the 10 swing weight points that this racket came in under spec. I feel like that would have helped me keep the ball deeper and lower without having to overswing. But with the way that the racket was playing in the form that I received it, it was hard for me to hit anything penetrating as it seemed like I was constantly floating the ball back. All right, so moving on to serves, I was excited to hit serves with this racket. Here I am loosening up a bit, about to make it rain aces. And yeah. That's the wrong kind of ring. Oh. 
All right, well, here we are back at it a couple days later. The suspense was worth it though because the V-Core 95 was a really nice serving racket. It had plenty of pop and it was also stable and forgiving if I didn't completely center the ball. On first serves, I felt like I could step up and spot serve and get plenty of pace out of the racket. Slice serves had good movement and my favorite serve with this racket was probably the second serve. It was super easy to spin and I felt like I had good command over the ball as well. So all in all, the V-Core 95 is a good one. I think it's the most forgiving 95 on the market and the most viable in today's game. I'd recommend this racket to advanced baseliners with moderate to full length swings that can consistently time the ball well and like to use a variety of shots to construct points. All right, so that's all for the review. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and don't forget to embrace the grind.